And we're back. You're listening to On The Go With Tiffany Patton. Your link to love, life, and liberty right here on WGOD Radio. And we have no other than the doctor himself. He is in the building live and ready to go. It's no other than Dr. Eddie Connor. Hello, sir. Hey, hey. Glad to be on. <laughs> Whoa, this mic is hot for real. Yes, the mic I'm, is hot. I'm, I'm glad to be uh, here on the on the show, uh, it's okay. You can you can keep me hot. You okay. Keep me hot. I like that. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad to be on the show with uh, one of uh, Detroit's divas. Mm. And you always know I call you divinely inspired, victorious, accomplished sister. So uh, ah, definitely. I take all that. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, I take it all. <laughs> definitely representing. I'm glad to be on the show. For Dr. Real. Eddie Connor is like a slew of things. Not only is he a professor. Um, but he is an international speaker and the founder of the Literacy and Mentoring Program, Boys to Books. Uh, he is also a survivor of stage four cancer, and he is a best-selling author of six books, six, including Unwrap the Gift and You, Heal Your Heart. And Dr. Connor has been featured, as I said, every time you turn on the TV, uh, ABC, BET, CBS, Fox News, NBC, The Steve Harvey Show. Shall I go on? A lot of alphabet series. <laughs> but I'm glad to be on WGOD. All right, that's Radio right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. For sure, for sure. How do you start to begin to have those conversations with our young men? Well, I think you have to have those conversations at a very young age and really let our young people know that uh, this really, as Dr. Cornell West would suggest, race still matters. Mm -hmm. um, Martin Luther King suggested, Dr. King suggested that uh, either we're going to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Mm. Um, uh, Malcolm X says nobody can give you anything. Nobody can give you freedom, justice, or equality. If you're a man, take it. Mm -hmm. Frederick Douglass takes it to another level. He says if we build strong children, we won't have to repair broken adults. What I'd like to do is remix that and say if we build strong boys, we won't have to repair broken men. How often do we see grown boys in the community, 50, 60, mm. 70 years of age, or even younger than that, who have not matured and manifested their, their masculinity? Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes we see vulnerability as femininity rather than really true masculinity. And so we don't open up sure. ourselves up because we are so uh, connected to the negative. And so really the whole aspect of My Brother's Keeper is really uh, empowering our, our men to really recognize their value, know their worth from the aspect of this being a book as a manual for manhood. We all know the, the negative stati statistics and stereotypes, mm -hmm. but I think we have to let our young men know that you're not pariah and a predator, you're a provider and protector. Yes. You're not a detriment, you're determined. You're yes. not a thug, you're a scholar. You're not a stereotype, you're a mm -hmm. prototype. Mm -hmm. And when we begin to invest our young in, uh, power into our young men to, to, for them to understand that their history doesn't begin with slavery. That's right. There's a king on the inside yes. of you, and you have to give life to that. Yes. And so we have to not just tell them, we have to show them. Now, when you talked about um, statistics, I, I saw a staggering one, and it said there were, and this is from the New York Times, and the headline said 1.5 million black men are missing. Right. And basically they stated in the article that they were missing due to death or imprisonment. Absolutely. Um, more, they, there is, it can be accounted that as in 2016 there's more black men incarcerated than there were enslaved in 1716. Wow. So slavery is by another name. Hmm. Slavery is now, the, the incarceration epidemic is now the new slavery. It's, it's the new Jim Crow. Yeah. And you know what? Okay, so... Uh, off, slightly off this topic a bit. I was looking up different ways um, to, fi you know, financial uh, stability increase, and they were talking about streams of income. And do you know number? I want to say it had to have been like number three as mm. I was going down the list was jails. Yeah, I couldn't believe. Like I, w I was just like blown away. I said, "Wow, this is just something that people truly look into as." Um, a, a means of wealth. Yeah, I absolutely. mean, just prison is big business. Yes, yes, and but it's our young men that are making them tri million billion dollar businesses. Absolutely, absolutely. So you have your mentoring program, boys to books. Mm -hmm. How do you? What types of programs 
do you have or what types of talks do you have with the young men and regarding staying away from foolishness, mm -hmm. not putting themselves in a position to where they are incarcer incarcerated? Right. What does that conversation sound like? Right. Well, uh, Boys to Books, it's, it's a program that I began and developed some years ago, um, really looking at illiteracy and incarceration being so interconnected. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, you know what, every mentoring group has to have a literacy component. Mm -hmm. There's no need of us showing our young men how to be a man and how to tie a tie, but they leave your program and don't know how to read. Mm -hmm. And so uh, readers have to become leaders, and you can't lead if you can't read. Mm -hmm. But with that, I began to strategize and, and organize a, a implementation to uh, really invest value into our young men so that they, they really recognize who they are. And so that is through them defining what's the difference between a male and a man. Mm -hmm. You can be a male and never step into manhood. Yes. You can have the physicality because manhood is not about what you possess from the waist down. That's right. It's about what you possess from the neck up. All right. So placing an emphasis on who our young men are, defining themselves, understanding their purpose. Uh, African proverb says the two most important dates in your life are number one, the day you were born. I know we celebrate our birthday mm -hmm. like it was a national holiday. Some of, <laughs> us, some of us get turned up and I ain't gonna look at nobody. I'll incriminate you. But it's not just the day you were born. It's uh -huh. the day you realize and recognize why you were born. That's true. Because the why symbolizes that you, you have a purpose, you mm -hmm. have possibility, potential, right. but you have to give life to that. Mm -hmm. And so when I began to really uh, share that and share my story of overcoming being diagnosed with stage four cancer at the age of 15, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with NHL. I thought it was National Hockey League. I, I thought I'd done hit the lottery. I thought I hit the Powerball. I know y'all, none of y'all play that. But, but it's not so much... So much about what I had gone through is the, the mindset that I had to switch on mm -hmm. and understanding that God had not just brought me to this to lead me, but he brought me to it to bring me through. That's right. And so when I saw the first three letters in cancer is can, you can overcome, you can survive. Mm -hmm. Letting our young men know the last four letters in African and the last four hmm. letters in American doesn't just spell can, it, it spells I, I can. can. That's right. And so to be able to birth that type of mentality into our young men to recognize their greatness and to contribute. Je Dr. George Frazier says this. He says, once you, uh, once you, um, earn, once you learn, mm -hmm. you must earn and then return hmm. back to your community. It's not just enough for you to learn, not just enough for you to earn your money, but mm -hmm. you got to return. The talented 10th have to go back and invest into the 90th of society. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've been blessed to do that and to empower our young men. And that's really became the impetus to develop President Obama's My Brother's Keeper initiative, mm -hmm. which I worked on in 2012, which became and led to fruition. And I said, I got to write this.